Right now I'm going to explain the table that's written in the 1.4 task. So this table is going to show the differences between an explicit formula and a recursive formula. The first thing that we're talking about is a type of thinking that's represented. So the type of thinking in an explicit formula says that a process that relates the input x with the output y. In other words, an explicit formula can tell me what y is when I know x. And that's for any x. So I could pick an x that might be four, I could pick an x that might be 100, and I can immediately just plug that in and figure out what the y value is that's related to it. Whereas in a recursive formula, this is a repeated process that uses one term to find a later term. In other words, a recursive formula can tell me the next y when I know the one before it. So I need to have that previous one. And so it's almost like filling out a table where I have one term and then I'm going to continually do the next thing to get to the next term. So you need the previous to find the next one. So if I want to find that 100th term, I actually need to know the 99th. And to find the 99th, I need to know the 98th. So you have to work your way up to that last term where an explicit, you can just find any one. Then we talk about examples of both. So an explicit formula could be something like y equals 2x plus 1. This is an arithmetic type of sequence. Or you could have something like f of n equals 3 times 2 raised to the n. This is a geometric sequence. Notice this one uses y, this one uses f of n, this is function notation. Recursive formula examples. So we have f of 0 equal to 1, and then f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus 4. So this f of 0 equals 1, this indicates our first term, which will be helpful because we're going to need, again, that previous term to find the next one. So here, we to find the nth term, we would need the previous one. This f of n minus 1 means previous. And then since we're adding 4 each time, this is arithmetic. When we start multiplying, that's going to be geometric. But again, you have to have a first term with our recursive formula and then explaining that previous term within our problem. It doesn't always have to be f of 0. You might see times where it's f of 1. It could be anything that you want to start with, but this is going to be your starting term. Advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of an explicit formula is you can, it can be used to quickly find the output for any input. So again, we can find that 100th term if we wanted to very easily. Um, a disadvantage is it's not as easy to identify the pattern of growth from one term to the next. And then for a recursive formula, it makes it very easy to find the next term in a sequence and think about the pattern of growth, where a disadvantage would be it would not be efficient to find a term late in the sequence if you only know the first few terms. So again, if we know term number one, to find term 100, we'd have to count all the way up to 100 to get there, so it's not quite as fast as that explicit formula.